Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where on Wednesdays we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. It's been a little bit um, since my last um, video. I just wanted to say nice to see you again. Uh, it's been uh, a, little, a bit, a bit. So um, I took a little bit of a break off um, to work on my website. I had some orders. Thank you very much, all of you, for your support. Um, the exhibition, the current exhibition of Western artists working in Japan is still up on my site. I encourage you to have a look if you haven't had a chance. It's been very well received, um, and so I've been busy with um, packing and shipping and, and sales, and so I hope everyone had a wonderful um, uh, holiday season. We're just about to do one um, another holiday uh, coming up uh, in a couple days. It'll be New Year's Day. Tomorrow's New Year's Eve. So one of the things that I like to do at the end of the year is sort of re-examine how the year went um, in, in a lot of as uh, facets of my life. But for today's uh, talk, I just want to focus on, on on acquiring artwork and and you know basically as a collector and as a dealer, you know I'd like to look back and see what's come in um, to my hands, sort of think about it, appreciate it, obviously, and and um, you know as collectors, um, I think a lot of us really. Um, you know, we, we get into a mode of acquisitions, um, some of us, and we, we, once we acquire the thing we'd like, um, then it's always on to the next thing. And I certainly understand that. That is uh, a mode of, of thinking that is not foreign to me. I get that. But it's also, I think, really helpful uh, for all of us to take stock on uh, at what, where we're at in our collecting, um, and what has come across um, and what we've added to our collections. I, I think all of those things are really helpful because it helps us appreciate what we have. Or, you know, if you have more than one print, that is a collection. And so, you know, it, it, it's at this time to really think um, what, again, what we've um, been blessed to, to own. Or I don't really even look at it as ownership. I, I really look at it as as um, we're temporary custodians um, to important artwork that will be passed on to the next generation and the next generation. And so, you know, at this moment, um, I want to think back to all of the things that have come into my hands. And one of the prints that I think are, I'm really excited and really thankful to, at least temporarily, own is a important print by Onchi. And as many of you know, uh, who follow these videos and, and know me, Onchi is one of my favorite artists. And I talk about him a lot. And despite that, I still don't think he, he has received the attention that he's due. Um, and so uh, today, I'm just going to talk briefly about a print that um, I've acquired recently. Um, and, you know, and just talk about a little bit of the history and, and the artistry, of course. Um, and, you know, there's some interesting surprises that I've discovered about this print that I'll also share. So without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. So the, the other thing before I go into um, the print, one of the things that I do at the end of the year also is I pull out my prints um, my collection, and I just kind of look at it, and I, I just kind of look at what I've been able to build and what prints I've I've acquired, what prints I've sold, and it gives me a sense of what I want to do um, next year. So you'll see some boxes in the background here, ignore them, but they, they're boxes of prints from my collection, and, you know, I'm currently sort of thinking about um, what prints basically to um, DSS and as, as well as acquire. So uh, the print that I want to discuss today is this really fantastic design by Onchi. Uh, the print um, was done originally in 1932 and I'll talk about the original printing uh, in a bit but uh, it basically the, the, the design is called diving. 
Um, it was done in 32. It's a wood block print. And what's interesting is that this design was actually submitted for a, a exhibition and also I think a competition in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Museum of History, Science and Art that was uh, held in July through August of 1932. And, um, you know, I, I believe uh, Onchi submitted this uh, print in this exhibition because it was held in conjunction with, um, I think the Olympic Games were being held um, in Los Angeles at the time. So um, that was one of the reasons um, why they held that exhibition. And then the, the design was later um, sort of exhibited in Paris in 1934. And, and basically the, the, the print traveled quite a bit. And I actually don't know which impression of this design was the one that went to LA and then to Paris. I suspect, I have some suspicions and you know, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on, on this design and on this particular impression to, to figure out which one went to the US and then um, to Europe and then back to Japan. But this is the print I'll discuss. This is the print that I acquired. But before we get to the print, I wanna talk about the first printing. Now we have here a very early unique impression of this design. Um, it was done in a very long um, scroll-like format. Um, the, the top part here is what I have, and Onchi originally included this um, space here with water. Um, and so we have a diver who she's basically caught in a moment, um, and, and she is diving towards the, obviously, the water below. And in this print, the composition is really interesting. It's been altered, obviously, with the addition of the bottom, but the, also the emphasis of the design is, it's more lyrical, it's, it's, it's more about the flow of the figure in the sky, actually, not necessarily in the sky, but yeah, she's, she's sort of soaring above it all. And, and, then, and then this, of course, this empty space that's masterfully been utilized um, in the, within the design and then the water there. It's a beautiful print. And it, as far as I know, it's unique. This impression originally came, um, well, not originally, but recently came from the Judah collection. And um, it was in a private collection for, you know, I, I, I think, it, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years, in fact. And I had um, ample opportunity to examine this impression while it was in the uh, private collection. It was kind of a neat thing to be able to do. And then it was sold to a private museum, um, Nihon no Hanga in Amsterdam. And so, um, yeah, that museum acquired it. And it, it's, it's a masterpiece. It's a great design. And, um, and, and in fact, it's featured, obviously it's in this book, and I wanna show you the, the book. Waves of Renewal, Modern Japanese Prints from 1900 to 1960. So the, this book is an excellent reference. I highly recommend it. I have it available for sale in my bookstore, but it is a fantastic reference that highlights the collection from the, the Nihon no Hanga holdings. Um, that were put together over the last, you know, I'd say, 30-some years. And um, this print is one of their um, more important designs by Onchi. And so it started off in this long format. And, you know, I just wanted to show this to point that out. But then Onchi, being the, the, the experimenter that he was, changed it. And I, I could see why he changed it. Here, it, this book is the Onchi Catalog Resume, the latest one that's been uh, produced for an, a museum exhibition that was out, uh, I don't know, three, four years ago at the Museum of Modern Art Tokyo. It was a great exhibition. I attended the, the show, and um, the, the catalog is fantastic, so I highly recommend it. I also happen to have it available for sale on my bookstore. So uh, on this design, Onchi clearly made the, the print shorter. He, he cut the bottom portion and added these clouds, which I think are really cool. 
Uh, the clouds uh, accentuate the height of where the diver is, how high she is. And you know the water suggested, obviously the diver is diving into water. And so this, this sort of change places a greater emphasis on the diver and the space around the diver. And I think it makes the composition that much more dramatic, in, in my opinion. Um, not that this design isn't charming and beautiful and extraordinarily rare, but uh, as an artistic decision, I think Onchi did the right thing uh, at making the design a bit shorter. And, um, and so this design was done slightly different, uh, slightly later. So uh, the I would say this was done about 1932. This was done probably 32 into 33, and then we have this state. And um, as far as I've been able to determine, this is unique. There are two known impressions of this version. One is at the MFA in Boston, and another one is in a Japanese museum. And then there's this copy. And this copy recently came up for sale at Christie's. That's where I acquired it. Uh, and it was uh, from the Kawasaki collection. It was a Japanese uh, collector that had, had a few important Onchi prints in his collection. And this is the design that's actually in the 1978 Onchi catalog raisonne. It's the exact same print. Um, oh, yeah, Kawasaki loaned the, the, the print for the catalog resume, and that, which is basically the earliest book dedicated to Onchi's body of work. Now, this particular print is different, slightly different from this version and then the version from the MFA. Both of these are the same. So if you, if you go to the MFA's website, um, MFA in Boston, you will note uh, that this exact design is there and it's done in the same format. Now, I want to draw your attention to this impression, which is is basically the same print with subtle changes that I think make the print even tighter and more powerful. So first of all, Onchi made the, 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 the size of the paper even, even shorter. Here, uh, if you could tell, because I'm sorry about the glare, there is a, a bigger space below the 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 clouds, and um, here the space below the clouds is basically at at the end of the paper. You can almost read this as you could see a very hard line that was printed with the clouds, and that creates the border of the design. This is basically the margin of the print. And here you can't, you don't have that, that, that hard line, actually. It's not printed that way. And if you go to the MFA's website, you will also see that the line isn't there. It's a softer sort of printing. And so Onchi made the decision to, to create this line to, to sort of frame the image a bit more. He also chose deliberately to to use paper that was wider on the edges. And you'll note here, and this is the full sheet, there, the, there isn't a lot of space around the image. And if you go to the website of the MFA in Boston, you will also note the same thing, that there, there's very little space on the edges. So this opens up the composition a little bit, and which allows the eye to really focus in on the diver. It has a, a bit more of a, I, I, I see a lot more impact um, with the, the composition here. It's, it's tighter, it's more powerful, it's more potent. This, this, I mean, it's a great design, great impression, great, great everything, honestly, and I'd be happy to own this copy. But it's a little bit looser. And it's a little bit, you could see the progression between this early impression, this impression, and then this impression. You, it's almost akin to a photographer that has his or her sights on something and they're zooming in a little bit more. And that's what Onchi's done to really frame the, the, the design. And so I, I think it's very neat. This also shows the sort of constant experimentation 
uh, Onchi just loved to do with his prints. He was never really finished, and he was always working on them. And so Onchi, if you're an Onchi collector or you're an admirer of Onchi, and it, let me encourage you to be an admirer of Onchi, he he constantly reworked his design. So if you're lucky to have an impression, it's going to look different from the other impressions. And that's one of the neat things about Onchi and collecting Onchi's work, that you basically have a unique work. Um, and, and, and so you basically see that quite a bit. I wouldn't say that every single impression Onchi created is unique from other impressions, but they all display variances in some way, which is r really neat. Now, on this print, I want to point out that we have an embossed uh, signature. It's kind of hard to tell here, but there's an embossing uh, K. Onchi with that uh, cartouche, diamond-shaped um, cartouche, which has um, his Japanese um, character for his name. And, um, you know, I just want to sort of zoom in on parts of the print so you could see what it looks like in person. Well, as close to being able to see it in person as possible. One of the things about this print I also really like is that it's very, it's very indicative of the time. It, it really has a nineteen, a 1930s vibe, um, and it really reflects the time um, when the print was made. Um, of course, the style of the swimsuit, um, and just the whole vibe of it has that quality. It also kind of reminds me of California, which is interesting that that this design was uh, submitted into that exhibition and competition. The other thing I wanted to point out is that there's this book here. This is one of the, I think, five books the Chiba Museum of, of Art produced. It's th This set of five books is uh, a must for any Sosaku Hanga aficionado. And um, in, in the book, here, if I could just move that, there is a photograph from the, the exhibition in Paris from 1934, and you will see that the diver is exhibited in that exhibition. Now, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more research, but that, that design looks a lot like, or that impression looks a lot like possibly this impression from the Kawasaki collection. So one of the things that uh, I would encourage um, all of my uh, friends and fellow collectors out there to do is do research, especially on the provenance on prints. You might discover that some of your prints were in exhibitions um, around the world, whether they were in museums or in private or public institutions or, or just exhibitions. There's a good chance that there's, there's a lot of prints out there being sold that n were in exhibitions. And so you know, I'd recommend doing some research on, on your prints, particularly ones that are important and notable from collectors uh, who were active uh, in, in uh, promoting their collections. And um, in the case of ukiyo-e, uh, there's a lot of collectors that put their collector seals directly onto a print. And so you see these little insignias or initials or, or symbols. And those are they were added later by collectors. Now, I don't recommend adding um, seals to your prints. I, I basically consider that graffiti. But the, the fact is that some collectors did do that, and some of those seals do represent uh, prominent collectors. And so you might be able to do research on who owned the print and where it was exhibited. So I'm going to zoom in again so you could, you could see the print. Such a great design. I think it's a very cool print. And so, again, this is one of those designs I'm looking back at my year and being very grateful that it's come across my hands. Um, you'll, you may be seeing it on my website sometime soon, but I just thought I'd show this print to all of you. Um, and I guess it's such a, a beautiful and important design.
Well, so that's the print that I wanted to discuss today. And, and I'm thinking now for the uh, future, where we're, we're heading to 2021, thank God. This year has been um, challenging for all of us. Uh, and uh, and I'm, I am fortunate that, uh, it, that this year, though challenging, has uh, brought a lot of blessings as well. And at the end of the year, it's always good to count your blessings. Uh, we all have them. At the very least, we're still here. And that is uh, the biggest blessing, I, I think, overall. And, and as collectors, um, we have the opportunity to just sort of enjoy our, our, our passion. You know, pull out your prints and, and enjoy them. And if you have them framed, walk by and stand in front of your prints and just admire them and, and consider them. Um, they help, in my experience, they help relieve stress. They help uh, with rekindling your passion in your collecting or your interest in, in this area. And so, you know, um, it's a good thing to do at the end of the year. Um, and one other thing, I'm just curious, uh, just to make this a little bit more interactive, if you care to share a print that you're that you're very happy to have acquired over the last year, I would love to see it. Why don't you include it in the comments below? Um, it would be great to share um, what some of you uh, out there have been collecting and what you think um, you, you've acquired uh, that you you love. I would I always learn so much from collectors on what they've been collecting, what they're interested in. And so, you know, feel free to, you know, to drop a, a photo or even a short video. I would love to see it. So uh, please, let me encourage you to, to comment and add that um, information below if you'd like. And I want to wish all of you a very healthy, happy, and prosperous new year. Uh, and I look forward to sharing with you all more prints um, from my website, from my personal collection. Um, uh, and also, there's going to be some great exhibitions that I have lined up for next year. So please keep an eye out for those. There's a lot of activity on my site always. All of my Woodblock Wednesday videos are archived there, as well as my bookstore and other information um, of Japanese prints and paintings and history that is found on the website, on the internet, actually. I catalog that stuff, too, and share things I, I find interesting. So have a look, collectingjapaneseprints.com. Thank you very much for your support. It's very much appreciated, and I'll see you next year.